Did you know that you can change the way that your multi-view looks on your ATEM switcher? The multi-view is the display that you connect to your switcher that shows all your different cameras, your preview and your program and so on. By default, it'll probably look something like this. Preview up in the top left, program in the top right, and then your first inputs here below it. But did you know that Blackmagic actually allows you to move things around wherever you want? All you need is a computer running ATEM software control. Other switcher manufacturers let you do this too, but today I'm gonna specifically show you how to do this using an ATEM constellation because that's what I have. If you use another brand, I'm sure there's lots of resources out there showing you how to do this, and the same principles probably apply. Now, the default layout probably works fine for most people, but you can level up your live stream by arranging the multi-view exactly how you need it, so let's dig into it. First off, make sure you've got ATEM software control set up on a computer that's on the same network as your switcher. If you've never set up a computer to do this, you really need to because it opens up all sorts of configuration and settings that are almost impossible to set up directly on your switcher. If y'all wanna see a video deep diving how to actually do this or even the other things that you can do within software control, let me know down in the comments. Anyway, once you've got that open and connected to your switcher, let's jump down to the bottom left corner and click on that gear icon. That opens up this new window that has a ton of different settings. And the one we specifically want to go to is the multi-view tab right up here. Once you're on this screen, depending on your switcher, you may have more than one multi-view that you're actually able to configure. We'll dig into that later, but for now, let's take a look at multi-view one. The first thing that you can actually do is to choose how many sources you actually want to show on your multi-view. You can do that here under the setting labeled view control. By clicking into each of these four quadrants, you can choose whether to show one big feed or even four smaller ones. You can see it change on the config page as soon as you click the button, and you'll also see the change on the multi-view yourself. This means that you can set up your multi-view to show as few as four or as many as 16 different sources at one time. Depending on how many inputs you have and how complex your show actually is, different versions of this could make sense for you. You may also like to set it up similar to the default arrangement, but maybe all your inputs on the left side and your preview program on the right side. That's kind of the beauty of this. You can arrange those sources however you want in order to make them most efficient for your live stream and your team. Now, moving on to the next setting here, we have audio meters. By toggling this, you can choose to show the audio levels that are coming in on all of your inputs or even going out on your different outputs. You can also click the little meter on each individual source, which will toggle the audio meter just for that one. For a church live stream, we don't usually need audio meters for each one of our inputs, since most of us are just taking in a single audio feed straight from our soundboard and ignoring what's actually coming in from our cameras. Because of that, I like to usually keep them all turned off, except for maybe the meter on my program output, since that's all that I really care about. But if you were working in a different setting where each one of your cameras had a microphone set up and you cared about those individual audio feeds, you can see why it would make sense to keep the meters turned on for each single input, just to make sure you always knew what was coming in and where. Next up is the frame guides, and there's not a whole lot to say here. I'm pretty sure that these only show up on previews, but honestly, I'm not completely sure because I don't actually use them. I kind of wish you could reconfigure this to show like a rule of thirds grid instead of this guide, but since you can't, I usually just keep it turned off. Again, you can set this at the global level or for each individual source as you need it. Now, finally, let's jump into the most important piece, actually choosing what sources are showing up in each section on your multi-view. To do that, all you have to do is click the dropdown in each section here. You'll notice that you can choose from basically any source, whether it's your inputs or your keys, your masks, your outputs, basically any video signal that your switcher knows about can be shown on one of these feeds. This is extremely powerful because you can set up your multi-view to show you pretty much any information that you ever need to know, especially if you're doing slightly more complex things with your switcher. For example, you'll notice that I have a super source feed down in my bottom row. If all I could ever see were my first eight inputs, I would never know what my super source actually looked like before I cut to it, which is obviously not great. But by customizing my multi-view, I always know how that looks and whether or not it's actually ready to take in the moment. It's a similar story for the source right next to it, the director cam, which is a fairly recent addition for us. That's an input I never actually want to cut to on the live stream, yikes, but I like to have it there so that when I record my multi-view for my YouTube videos, you guys can see a shot of whoever's directing to help provide a little bit of context to how they're calling shots during the service. So build out your multi-view with whatever sources make the most sense for you. 
And if you have the ATEM Constellation 2ME or even bigger switchers, you also have the option to set up a second multi-view, which comes out of a second output on the back of the switcher. You have all the same configuration options for this multi-view, so you can set it up in exactly the same way we did this one. This is great if you have a ton of inputs or maybe even a lot of different keys or pieces of media. Things you don't necessarily need to see all the time, but you'd like to be able to look at when needed. It's also great if you want to set up a cleaner multi-view for other members of your production team. For example, you could set up a multi-view that only shows you four cameras and put that in front of your lighting team. They don't necessarily need to see preview or program or your different keys, but it would be good for them to see how the lights are actually affecting the cameras on broadcast. Again, not all switchers actually allow you to have more than one multi-view, but if yours does, it can be a super useful tool to take advantage of. Finally, let's look at one more small thing you can do to customize your multi-view. Customizing the labels on your sources. To do that, stay in this window and jump over here to the Sources tab at the top. Here you can change the names and labels of your different sources. On the Inputs tab, it's just what you'd expect, the name of your different inputs coming into your switcher. By default, Blackmagic just labels them as camera N, where N is the input number, but you can honestly call them whatever you want. For example, if you want to remember the names of your camera ops, you can set these up to also show their name alongside their camera number. You can also change the label itself, which is what's going to show on the input side of software control or on your stream deck if you're using Companion to control your switcher. If you don't know what Companion is, check out my video up here that explains what it is and how to set it up to help your live stream. After you change the names and labels, you have to actually hit save to have them take effect. But when you do, voila! They show up directly there on your multi-view. I don't personally do this because we only have a few cameras each week and I know all my cam ops, but this can be super useful if you have a lot of people switching in and out or maybe not serving all that often. I have changed a couple of names though, such as I've got my director cam here and I've cleaned up the labels of the cameras we use in order to keep things a little bit more tidy on my switcher. On this page, you can also configure the names of outputs and different media in case that's something you wanna to do to make your switcher look that much cleaner to anyone who's using it. So there you have it, a few super easy ways to make sure that your multi-view is set up in a way that best suits you and your team. Drop a like if this was helpful or leave a comment with any other questions you might have. And check out some of my other videos on my channel for other helpful church livestream tips. Until next time.